Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me, Nathan. Just recently, Google launched a new Gemini Computer Use API, so in this video, I want to show you how to try out this new tool. So, while Google is preparing to release the highly anticipated Gemini 3 model, they also launched a new Gemini Computer Use model that's specifically designed to interact with user interfaces on the web. This model is now available in preview via API from Google AI Studio and Vertex AI platform. While AI models can interface with software through structured APIs, many digital tasks still require direct interaction with graphical user interfaces, for example, like filling and submitting forms. To complete these tasks, agents must navigate web pages and applications just as humans do, by clicking, typing, and scrolling. The ability to natively fill out forms, manipulate interactive elements like drop-downs and filters, and operate behind logins is a crucial next step in building powerful, general-purpose agents. So yeah, this model is also quite impressive on paper. In terms of its performance, it currently ranks number one, outperforming other alternatives like Anthropic Sonnet 4.5, as well as OpenAI's computer agent on multiple benchmarks. The model seems to deliver leading quality for browser control while having the lowest latency, as measured by performance on the browser-based harness for online mind to web now, here's an example where the Gemini 2.5 computer use model is interacting with a pet's pastor. In this add new client page, it can enter the details for a new client, such as first name, last name, date of birth, and species. After that, it opens the appointment page, and then it tries to make a booking for the new client, the Samoyed dog, for the date of 10 October. The model then enters the rest of the detail before scheduling the appointment. So, as you can see, this specialized Gemini model is able to interact with user interface just like humans do. And here is another demo where Gemini 2.5 interacts with a sticky note jam website. On this website, Gemini reads the notes and try to sort them under the right sections that have been defined. It can drag the notes around to sort them, which is quite impressive. As to how it works, Gemini 2.5 computer use operates in a continuous agent loop, which is illustrated as follows. First, it takes in the user requests and screenshot of the environment as well as a history of recent actions. The model then generates a response, typically a call to a function representing one of the UI actions such as clicking, typing, or dragging. It can even ask for user confirmation when it's needed. After the action is actually executed, the environment sends back an updated screenshot as well as other relevant data like the current URL which allows the model to analyze the new state to generate a new response. This cycle will go on until Gemini thinks the task is completed. The workflow enables Gemini to interact with the real web interfaces autonomously, efficiently, and safely. Next, let me show you how to get started with this model. Alright, to try out the new Gemini 2.5 computer use, you can use the hosted version at gemini.browserbase.com. On this website, you can test out the model using these predefined prompts, or you can type your own over here. For now, I will try this prompt to browse hacker news for trending debates, uh, so let's click that. And on the next screen, we can see the full prompt, which is to go to Hacker News and find the most controversial posts for today. Read the top three comments and summarize the debate. We can see the browser on the right side over here. Uh, first, it opens the Google web page, and then after that, it will type Hacker News to the search bar, and then press Enter to search the web. Uh, we can see the tool used by the agent on the left side. There is the Type Text Add tool and then click Add Tool, and then the agent can see the posts on the browser, and to find the most controversial posts, it will simply select the posts with the highest number of comments. There are some poses with the highest comments here, such as NASA chief suggests SpaceX may be booted from Moon Mission, ChatGPT Atlas, the new AI browser from ChatGPT, uh, and I want to cover that later by the way, and then also the replacing Heroku pose. Uh, now the session is completed, as we can see on the right side. Um, I think the UI for the AI step on the left side is a bit slow to keep up. Okay, so the agent decided to look into the post about NASA and SpaceX, as it has the highest commands, and then it read the top 3 comments. The details can be seen over here, uh, I will skip that a little. 
And the core of the debate is about the justification of the new moon mission announced by the United States. Something is necessary, while others are skeptical. And yeah, so that's how Gemini can use the browser. Uh, keep in mind that when you try these prompts, you might get different results because the website data would have changed already. Now, here's the model detail I fetched from the documentation. In terms of its input token limit, it has a 128k limit, and for its output, it's listed at 64k. And for the pricing, it's the same as the normal Gemini 2.5 Pro, which are $1.25 for input up to 200k tokens, and $1.50 for input above 200k tokens. $10 for output below 200k tokens, and $15 for output above 200k tokens. There is no free tier provided by Google, so you need to pay to use it. But I think this price is okay, as we know what Gemini 2.5 Pro is capable of. Now, if you're looking to set this up in your application, you can use the model with Python. The detail can be found in this quick guide created by Google, but basically, you need to make sure that you have both Playwright and Google Gen AI package installed, and then use Playwright to install Chromium. Once done, you need to get the API key from Google AI Studio. Uh, just go to aistudio.google.com, and then click Get API Key here, and then you can use any existing key or create a new API key over here, and make sure that it's connected to a billing account to make it work. After that, you can create a folder for the source code and then create a Python file in that folder. Here, I already have one created, it's called main.py, and I have the API key in the .env file here. Now, if you want this source code as well, uh, just let me know in the comments and I will share this on GitHub. But basically, the source code follows the guide from Google. First, we need to create a functions for browser actions, which is called execute function calls here. You can define the tools that Gemini can call, such as click at, type flex at, and navigate. After that, there is the code for capturing the environment state that will be processed by Gemini. And then, we initialize the Gemini model and Playwright, and then launch the browser. Once the browser is up and running, we'll start a loop that keeps calling the model and processing its responses through Python. If the model returns a function call, that function will be executed, and the updated state will be sent back to the model. When there's no tool call left, that means the agent is done, and we can safely close the browser. Alright, let's try running the Python script. I've already set the prompt here. Uh, go to search.brave.com and type hello world into the search bar. Don't press enter. I'll keep the prompt short since this is a paid model. I don't want to rake up too much peeling here. Now open the terminal and run python main.py, and you should see the script in action. First, the script will open the browser and then leave the rest to the agent. The agent will capture the screen and seeing a blank page, it will decide to navigate to the URL we provided, which is search.brave.com. We can see the logs on the terminal over here and we will see that in more detail when the script has finished running. Now, it will take a screenshot again uh, before clicking at the search bar over here and then it will type the text hello world. The agent will think for a moment, and seeing the request is completed, it will then close the browser. Now, we can go over the logs on the terminal, uh, so let's open it in full screen. Here, we can see that it took 5 turns to complete the request. First, it opens the web page and then navigate to the Brave Search URL, and then click on the search bar before typing the text in it. Once it's all done, the agent evaluates the actions at turn 5, deciding that the request is completed. So yeah, that's how you can implement the computer use model. Overall, it's a cool model that can navigate the web, just like people do. And now we have come to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Gemini computer use API? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you build profitable apps and projects using AI and other tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!